Hey guys, and today I wanted to run through a real quick concept that is uh, function threading. Uh, so threading is kind of uh, a term used to describe kind of having a, a specific path for the functions to go, kind of like a tree, and then having it branch into multiple quote unquote threads per entity. Uh, it, it's kind of, you don't have to use that word if you want to, but it's essentially a way for us to make things a little bit more multiplayer friendly. And I'll explain exactly what it is. Some of you might already know that this is a thing. Some people don't, um, but this will, this should help if you're trying to optimize some of your packs or whatever. Uh, so the way that this works is I'm going to put four villagers here and notice how I put the first one in the positive Z and then I put the second one in the negative X and then the third one in the neg uh, positive negative Z and then the fourth one in the positive X. Uh, that will actually come become important later. So I created this function and what it does is it says whoever is running it, it puts their position onto a fake player. So this is the temporary player. And then if that number is one or negative one, it'll tell you X or negative X. Then it does the same fake player. It gets overwritten by pause two so their z position and tells you if they're in the positive or negative z and then it gives us a little equals so that we can kind of have a divider so where the quote unquote threading comes into play is when we go ahead and we copy this command and run it so what we're going to be doing is we're going to go to all the villagers and we're going to run this command so some people tend to get confused by the way that this works so they may think that this fake player being overwritten uh, might cause some issues like for example you would have um, one of the villagers overwrite it and then before we get to this step another villager overwrites it but that's not how it works it actually works on threading so when I play a function uh, with an as at e before it that means that every villager will go it'll go to every villager individually and play all of the functions in the function branch all the way down before going to the next villager uh, and that's kind of where the threading comes from. So if I run this, you're going to see four things come up. You'll see plus Z, which is the first one I placed, negative X, which was the second one I placed, negative Z, which is the third one I placed, and plus X, which is the fourth one I placed. So the order that it decides to do the quote unquote threading is the order that the selector uses. And the order the selector uses by default is age. So the first one I place will be the first one it goes to second one, third one, fourth one, same order. Now, with this threading concept, you can make a lot of things multiplayer friendly and you can make a lot of efficiencies. For example, I can use these fake players and be safe and secure in knowing that they aren't being overwritten by another entity because I put them into a sub function that is run as at E. And I can put this into like a main loop into a ticking function and be totally fine knowing that every time I come here, the context is always one specific entity at a time. And that's why it's better to sub function than run everything in your ticking loop. Uh, so another thing we can do with this is we can change the order of the quote unquote threading, if you want to call it that. Um, so we can change the order based off of these. So if I go ahead and do sort equals random, it will pick a random order for them. So plus Z minus Z minus X plus X. How and here we have plus X minus X minus E plus C. So this is really useful for, um, if you want to do a pick random pick one system. So for example, if I want to do a pick random pick one system, uh, what this means is I want to basically sort my guys one at a time. So we're going to go ahead and do sort and I want to create a random order of these. Okay. I want to give them a random order. Uh, so then I will do, uh, and I want to save that random order. So what I can do is I can do scoreboard players set as test uh, equals dot order test. Okay, let me change that. Scoreboard players operation. And then what we can do is we can do scoreboard players add dot order test one. Okay, so what we do here is we're going to go to all of them randomly and we're going to set that and we're going to make them in an order like we'll give them a number and we're going to increment that number. So what this will do is it will randomly assign one, two, three, four, one going to each of these entities and it'll be in a random order and we'll remember that random order. This could be useful for example, if you're doing a multiplayer game and you want to assign um, people randomly to a set of teams. So like red, green, blue, purple, right? You can do this 
a couple different ways. This is one implementation. Um, you could have a scoreboard that corresponds to the color, increment the scoreboard, go to every player, but every player in a random sorting and give them a color and increment the color. Uh, so you could do that method. Obviously, there's a lot of different methods. Uh, I like that one personally, uh, but you, there's other methods as well. Uh, so then we have this. So we're going to run, we're going to reload and run sort. And when we run sort, we have one, two, three, four. Okay. And the one, two, three, four will be the order that was established uh, randomly. So TP at P to at E scores equal uh, scores equals test equals one limit equals one. So that is this guy. Okay. So we have one and then we have two, which is up here. And then we have three, which is over there. And finally four, which is right here. And if we go ahead and bake this again, so scoreboard player set dot order test zero. So we have to reset the number that increments and run it again. Now, if I go to one, one is now this guy on the right instead of the guy on the left. And two is now the guy on the left. And three is going to be the one up top and four is going to be the one at bottom. So we get a random list and this kind of helps uh, exemplify the threading in a sense, because for every entity on their own, it increments the score first, and then it copies that score to themselves. And then it handles the next entity. Uh, so yeah, I didn't want to spend too much time on this. I think that's as good as we'll get here. Uh, so yeah, that is function threading per se. And you can use this in a lot of different applications to cut down on how many scoreboards you need because you can use fake players uh, for calculations and stuff. And uh, you can also make things a little bit more multiplayer friendly. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.